Holly Peaks. You ready to talk about bees? No, why not? <laughs> In case you didn't know, um, I my dad was a beekeeper, an apiarist, whatever you want to call him. He made his livelihood from bees. Um, I was raised in the business. I helped build a lot of equipment. I did a lot of what they called extracting where you take the honey out of the boxes. And so I was very familiar with it. And when it came to when my dad was in a really bad wreck, he needed help. So spousal unit and I took a leave of absence from our jobs. We were actually only going to go and help him for about six months till he recuperated. And we ended up staying until spousal unit got sick. So we were in the bees running them ourselves for about 11 years. So I'm pretty familiar with bees. <laughs> you want to know anything about bees? I can tell you. <laughs> Anyways, I did, um, like I said, I'm not eloquent about stuff so I look up and get I'm gonna read you what it says it says honey bees depending on their role within the hive will have different lifespans a queen bee can live up to three to four years while a worker bee will live up to six weeks during the summer a drone will die shortly after mating but can live for several months if it has not done so the process of making honey can take around 45 days and involves bees working together with different roles to produce high quality honey. The bees improve on nectar, a plant product, by regurgitating and re dehydrating it. In their lifetime, a worker bee can produce about one twelfth of a teaspoon of honey. And it takes 12 bees to make a teaspoon. To make one pound of honey, 556 worker bees need to collect nectar from about 2 million flowers, which can involve flying more than once around the world. Honey bees are most likely indifferent to humans. They do not see us as an immediate threat, so most of the time they pass by without incident. The times that someone may want to be concerned is if they are potentially interacting with Africanized bees. All honeybee colonies respond aggressively when their colony is disturbed or attacked, but there is striking variations in the intensity of their response. In docile co colonies, only a few bees may respond, whereas in more aggressive colonies, the response may involve hundreds or even thousands of stinging individuals. A honeybee can sting a person or a predator using its stinger. Honeybee's stings are quite painful and even life-threatening to a small percentage of people who are allergic to the venom. Honeybees usually sting as a way to defend themselves or their colony. If you ever see a swarm that looks like a big ball of bees in a bush, on a fence post, on a bumper of your car, or almost any place, please just leave them alone. They are just there briefly. Odds are within one or two hours, they will all turn into a cloud and fly away. It's believed that baking soda can help neutralize the acidity of the sting and mitigate inflammation. While this may be considered by some to be an old fashioned remedy, I've seen it really help. Seek medical attention if you show signs of anaphylaxis. Now, um, the reason I added that in there is, first of all, most people think that if they swell up, they're allergic. That's a good sign if you swell up on the outside. If you swell up on the inside, then you'll go into an anaphylaxis and you need to get to a hospital. Swelling on the outside is a good thing. But if you take baking soda, and I know this works because I've done it. Um, for me, I've gotten stung so many times, I'm just used to it and it's not a big deal. But for somebody who it's new to, it's frightening. So if you take baking soda, put a little bit of water and make a paste out of it and put it on the sting, it will help draw out the venom and it, it actually helps with the pain and the inflammation. So very important if you get stung and you 
don't want it to get any worse. <laughs> the other thing is honeybees, when they sting you, they lose the stinger. It will be a little pumping um, thing in your hand. Scratch it out. Don't squeeze it because if you squeeze it, the venom's going to go in there. Just scratch it out. Make sure you scratch it out and not squeeze it because you want it out as soon as you can. The other thing is if a bee comes around you um, and you're worried about it, stand very still. I usually put my hand over my mouth because as you breathe, the breath might be construed as um, aggressive because you can't control your breathing. So I always put my hand over my mouth and my nose so that when I breathe, this breath doesn't come out and bonk them or anything. And they usually will just fly around and leave. Um, I'm not sure what kind of information would be best for anybody, but um, a couple of interesting points. Drones are the male bee, if you couldn't tell. They are um, raised at the beginning of spring because that's when mating would occur. See, when a hive gets too full of honey, they will, half of the bees will abscond and take the queen with them and start a new one somewhere else. And the rest of them there will make a new queen. So they, there is always a lot of drones in the spring to help fertilize the new queens. Now, they can't do anything for themselves. The worker bees, which are the females, feed them, take care of them, groom them, blah, blah, blah. And so in the fall, they want to conserve on food. Those little buggers are pushed out of the front of the hive and they will starve to death. It's kind of creepy, but it's a necessary evil because the hive needs to survive. Um, let's see, what other interesting things? The queen does all the egg laying. However, the worker can lay drone eggs, in case you didn't know that. But in order to make a queen, which it's just a regular egg that they make a queen out of, it just has different food given to them. Um, I'm sure you've heard of royal jelly because people like to get it for different reasons, for, for especially for their face and stuff. And they are fed royal jelly and their cell is hung up straight up and down instead of um, horizontal like normal cells are and so they just take a regular egg and make the queen out of it but again the only one that can lay those regular eggs is a queen anyways have I bored you enough there's so much to talk about about bees that um, it's hard to know where to stop but I think I should stop it's getting lengthy and I apologize, but I think bees are so amazing and God gave them wonderful insights and their whole purpose in like life is making honey. And if you don't take their honey, they'll abscond and go make it somewhere else. So it's very important. Our main focus was we used to pollinate um, crops in California, uh, predominantly um, almonds. There was a time when we did some alfalfa, but it's predominantly almonds that we did. But there are a lot of fruits and nuts and stuff that if the bees did not pollinate, they would not get a good crop. And the farmer pays the beekeeper to put their bees on there. So, you know, it's, it's kind of important. Your food comes from bees. <laughs> Anyways, okay, I'll quit boring you, I promise. But God made an amazing animal in the bee. And, or insect, I guess it really is. That's it, peeps. I hope this finds you absolutely amazing. Stay blessed. Until next time. Hey, you made it to the end. Please hit like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.